Welcome back, everyone. It's the Bourbon Judge. We are back with Barrel Bourbon, two brand new releases. So, yes, uh, really excited for today. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give a huge shout out to Barrel. Thanks, by the way, for sending over these uh, these bottles to review. So, we have two new uh, bottles coming out, or two new, I guess, brands or expressions coming out from Barrel Bourbon. We have the Ambarana finish, and we have, so this is the cast finish series, The Tale of Two Islands. Yes. All right. So, but what do you know about Barrel? So Barrel is truly, if you think about it, I've reviewed Barrel before in the past, you know, Batch 33, 34, blah, 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 and on, right? Review Barrel numerous times, so check out some of those previous episodes. But Barrel is truly the kings of blending whiskey. I mean, they blend some great ryes, bourbons, you name it, they really do. So this is from their whole cask finishing series. So you got the Ambarana, and we have the uh, Tale of Two Islands. So this is, is going to be a little interesting. So... Both of these coming in at 85 bucks, which is not bad. Uh, what I do like about barrel products is the fact that you can walk into most good liquor stores and find a barrel product of your choice. Whichever one you're looking for, they typically do have it. They make it very widely available, which is cool. All right, now everyone's doing the Ambarana finish, but this other one, this Tale of Two Islands, this is a little interesting. So let's go ahead, let's start with this Tale of Two Islands. So. Uh, what do we have here? So essentially, the uh, whiskey itself is a blend of five, six, and nine-year-old Indiana bourbon with uh, five and six-year-old Maryland bourbon. Ooh, Maryland bourbon, all right. Well, we do know Sagamore in Maryland. Even though Sagamore is known for their rise, we do know Sagamore is producing some, uh, some bourbon in the background. So my, that would be my guess. Uh, but again, a blend of Indiana and Maryland um, bourbons. The youngest whiskey in the whiskey, of course, uh, in the blend rather, is aged five years. So, of course, when you're looking on the front here, from your bottle as well, it's going to say aged five years. And the proof on this one is 118.22 proof. Now, what's very unique about this is the fact that, so in barely even, they put this on, they're very upfront, which I do respect that as well. Back in 2018, they produced um, a rum and they called it the legendary Tale of Two Islands rum. Essentially, it was a Jamaican rum that was finished in a peated Islay single malt barrel. So they took those old barrels, those single malt peated barrels, uh, which had rum in them for a long time and they kept those and they used it for this blend so you're gonna have i would expect some traditional bourbon notes but obviously there was rum in there as well so you're gonna have that, that sweetness from the sugar i would assume as well as that peat that smokiness as well so this is gonna be very interesting oh boy you guys know the judge and uh <laughs> single malt uh pita whiskey this is gonna be very interesting let's go ahead and dive into this one real quick <laughs> All right, so from a nose standpoint, all right, you definitely do get, oh wow. It's actually a, a good blend of, I mean, everything that you would imagine though. You definitely do get like those, that sweetness, like from the sugar, from the rum. That stands out. Not as much smoke on the nose. I thought because it was a single malt Islay barrel that it would have a lot more smokiness to it, but there's not a ton in the nose. It's a little, I mean, a, a smidge smoky, but not a ton. A lot more notes of like, a lot more like pepper notes. Traditional, like your, your caramel, some leather. Very oak for it as well. Again, just because the front of the uh, bottle says age five years. Again, they always have to put the youngest whiskey in the blend. So there is obviously, in this case, up to nine year old whiskey in the blend. So, all right. Yeah, but I mean, it's a lot more caramel. A lot more leather, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of oak, and just a smidge of like the the sugar from the rum and a smidge of a uh, smoke from the from the peat. But not bad at all. All right, nose is pretty good actually. We shall see. Eighty five dollars. Two separate judgments here. Two separate whiskeys. Let's check it out. Cheers, everybody. Ooh, mmm, oh wow, that's different, damn, okay, all right, I was not expecting that, hold on, let me get a little bit more, damn, I'm actually kind of surprised, let me get a little bit more, mmm, wow, sipping this, it almost has like an island thing to it, 
it truly is a good blend of bourbon and rum coming together. There's only a small, and I mean small hint of the the peat, like the, the smokiness from the peat, only a smidge. It's definitely a very vibrant and bold finish and long, by the way. At 118.22, you definitely feel this one. It goes down. I mean, it's it's long for sure. I'm actually gonna get a little bit more of this. I didn't think honestly that I was gonna like this because it was an X Islay peated single malt barrel. In my mind, I was like, I don't know, Judge. I don't think you're gonna like this. <laughs> but I actually do kind of like this. This is actually pretty damn good. Wow, I'm surprised. I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm surprised. Let me get a little bit more before I give a final judgment. Wow, the nose is nice. Very nice, peppery, a little bit of sweet, leather. Nice, nice nose, all right, a little bit more. Mm. Wow, this is very unique because it almost has like a, um, remember how everyone, including myself, we all love the seagrass, the rye whiskey that was, you know, had multiple different finishes. It's almost like a bourbon version of the seagrass because it has like that rum note that's in there, but it's, it's sweet, it's spicy, it's leathery. It's definitely different. Oh man, that's nice. It has very much like a, um, and the sugar notes definitely do that. You have the sugar in the, in the nose. That definitely comes through in the, uh, in the palate as well. That is very good, very unique. So, there can only be one judgment. Judge, keep it real, always. You might be surprised. This is actually a split decision. I'm gonna explain the reason why. If you are someone that loves your traditional bourbon, your caramel, leather, oak ford, and that's it, then I would say, this is probably not for you. But for me, I actually appreciate this and I actually like it a lot for me personally. It has that seagrass kind of a note from the, you know, again, from the other finish that they, they did, the, the rye whiskey. It has like that, like almost like that island kind of a note to it. It has like the rum that's mixed in there. Um, the smokiness from the peat, but not a ton, actually not a ton at all. And for me to get another pour, that just shows there's not a ton of peat in this at all just enough to give that extra little je ne sais quoi, but it's different. So if, you like, if you're like someone that really likes a different type of a whiskey that had a very unique finish, I think you would love this. So I'm gonna say try it at a bar first, only because it is very, very unique. It is definitely different, but for me, I'm good with that and I like this a lot. All right, cheers to Barrel Bourbon, another good blend. I was quite surprised with that peat in there. I did not think I was gonna like this. Mm. Oh man, that's, that's sexy. That's different. I like that. All right. Now we're going over to Ambarana. Ambarana finish. All right. So what do we know about Barrel's first expression here with Ambarana? So this is a blend of five, six, seven, and 10 year old Indiana bourbon whiskey, and then five year old Kentucky bourbon whiskey in here. And the final mash bill is a breakdown of 75% corn, 21% rye, and 4% malted barley. Same thing, $85 from MSRP. And because the youngest whiskey in the blend is age five years, they have to put five years on here, even though there is, as it says here, up to a 10 year old whiskey in the barrel. So, or in the blend, I should say. Now, the only thing with the Ambarana, and even like this one as well, the uh, the Tale of Two Islands, we don't know how long it's sat in the Ambarana barrels, and same with this one as well, the Tale of Two Islands. We don't know how long it's sat in the uh, the X uh, single malt uh, Islay barrels. We don't know how long it is, but we shall see. We shall see. We'll see whether or not if it's good or not. Fair? All right. So it's kind of interesting because Everyone is doing an Ambarana finish. I mean, you mean, I mean, I think Starlight might've been the first ones with their cigar blend that really made it well known. And now in the last year, everyone has an Ambarana finish. So Beryl, I can't blame you. Can't blame you. You gotta join the party, right? Gotta join the party. 
All right, real quick, three quick easy favors. Number one, hit the like button. Number two, drop me a comment. Let me know what are your thoughts if you tried either one of these. And last but not least, please make sure you all subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you get a notification each and every time I release new content. Cool? All right. Cheers. Mm, let me get the nose first. I was so excited to, <laughs> to sip it. <laughs> so I will say one distinct thing is this is not nearly as Ombrana Ford as like a Starlight, a Starlight or or even like a Fourgate. Both of those are very Ombrana Ford. This is almost like it, it probably didn't spend too much time in the Ombrana barrels because it's almost like they just kind of dipped it into the Ombrana barrel for like maybe like maybe like thirty days max. That's just my guess. I mean, it's not Ambrana for it at all. I mean, you definitely get like those traditional Ambrana notes, your cinnamon, your chocolate, almost like a toasted kind of a cinnamon kind of a note, but it's not extremely Ambrana Ford as like a starlight. So that's one key difference, which depending on your palate, you may or may not like. All right, here we go. Cheers, everybody. Ooh, mm. but that's good. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that a lot, actually. Damn, hold on. I gotta get a little bit more. All right, all right. <laughs> Uh-oh, there goes the cap. Cap down. The judge is obviously liking this one thus far. I need a little bit more. I gotta make my final decision here. Oh man, that is actually quite pleasant. It's nice that, what's the proof on this one, by the way? 116.42. So the, the finish is, this is like smooth sailing with this one. What I like about this is that it has a really good balance of your traditional bourbon notes, your caramel, your oak, your leather, but it also has a ton of the cinnamon in there, but not like overwhelming. Some Amarana finishes can be a bit over overwhelming. This one is not, not at all actually. And whew, it's time for a verdict, huh, Judge? The verdict is in. This is a... Ooh, that's a buy. I finished it. <laughs> that is pretty damn good. Between these two, if you like Ambrana finishes as a whole, you're gonna love the barrel Ambrana. At $85, very affordable in terms of, like I say affordable in terms of today's market of affordable, not in not in normal times, but in today's environment. But if you're looking for an Ambrana finish because a lot of them out there are very expensive, at $85, you can find it, it's easy to find, it's good quality whiskey, and it's uh, one that I think if you like Ambrana finishes, I think you'll actually love that. Great job with the barrel for that one. This one here, the Telf Two Islands, very good, but definitely try it at a bar. Hey friends, until the next time, peace, cheers, and most important, salute. Take care.